What's up guys, I'm in Havana, Cuba, and today we're doing street photography and street portraits in the streets of Havana, Cuba. It should be a lot of fun. We're gonna start off though with some architectural photography here in the Old Town. Do we, it's wind, why does the wind always pick up right when I'm trying to film? Always happens. We had a pretty good time shooting this morning and now we're out on the streets. I thought I'd do an episode of getting the shot today and talk about shooting street photography and street portraits because there's definitely no place in the world better to shoot street portraits than Havana, Cuba. So that's the plan for today. We're doing a little bit of a walking tour around old Havana right now and I'm sure there's gonna be lots of photo ops on the way. So in shooting street portraits or street photography, there's really two different styles. One is like the journalistic style in that you're photographing people without their knowledge or sometimes you're just sitting in a scene that's beautiful and waiting for somebody to walk into it. The second style is portraiture in which you're definitely asking permission, you're walking up to somebody having a bit of a personal conversation about the photo and then shooting it later. So those are the two styles. I do both styles and uh, yeah, it just really depends on the situation as to what you might be shooting. The last time I was in Havana, it was the off season, it was October and now it's high season December and I'm noticing there's tons more tourists here, um, which is kind of making it a little bit harder to shoot some street photography, but uh, I've got the whole afternoon still to shoot some more images and it's still a really cool place to wander around. I mean, check out this car. Check out that car. So cool. So if I'm being pretty honest, I'm kind of struggling with the street portraits today. Um, and I don't really know why, I'm just having a hard time finding that right scene. Uh, and I think one of the things, one of the issues is I was shooting 50 millimeters and it's kind of limiting. So I decided I want to get wider. I've got on the 16 to 35 now and I'm going to try to get really close. One of the rules of portraiture photography or one of the things people always talk about with portraitures is if your portrait's not powerful enough, it's because you're too far away from the subject. So it's time to get a little bit personal. It's time to get up in people's faces a little bit with the 16 to 35. Switching onto the 16 to 35 lens has actually been really helpful. Not only is it forcing me to get a little bit closer to the people I'm photographing, but it's forcing me to have a bit more of a, like a human personal connection with the people. And that's really important because I think that connection really comes out in the photographs. Now I know shooting 16 to 35 might be a really strange uh, focal length for portraits because it creates distortion. But I think in this case, the distortion is actually really helpful at making the image look like it has a little bit more depth and it makes it look a little bit more than a snapshot. And that's the difference between taking photos, snapshots, and making photographs out on the street. It's just creating something a little bit different than what your eye sees naturally. Now, I've only got like 20 minutes left until I'm supposed to meet up with my workshop group and shoot sunset somewhere down on the Malecon. So I'm gonna switch on my 70 to 200 millimeter lens just to try to get something a little bit different again before meeting up with the group. Thank you. 
street photography, especially street portraits, can be a bit of a funny thing. It can kind of turn into a bit of a sport if you're not careful. Today it's been a bit of a challenge, but it's also been pretty fun. Street photography is kind of a funny thing. Sometimes you win and sometimes you really just don't get anything. And Havana is such a great place for street photography and today I kind of feel like I failed a little bit. We're doing a bit of a time jump. It's now tomorrow and yesterday after shooting my images in Havana, I felt like I didn't get what I wanted. I didn't feel like I captured very many street images or street portraits, and I didn't feel like my street photography was on point yesterday. But the funny thing about street photography is sometimes it just takes seeing it on a bigger screen. So I moved my photos onto the computer, and I'm pretty happy with about five or six or seven of the images I shot yesterday. So the closing statement in yesterday's episode was that I wasn't really happy with what I shot and that sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and sometimes it's just luck with street photography. I think at the end of the day when I look back and think I got this many cool images out of one day in Havana, I'm pretty stoked with how things went yesterday. Street photography is a crazy thing and it's a bit of a challenge and Havana is a great place to learn how to do it for two reasons. One, it's just full of these amazing street scenes. And second of all, it's a really good place to become comfortable asking for permission to ask a photo. And, and in a lot of places that you go to shoot, Morocco or Peru, it's kind of hard to get photos of people authentically in the streets because a lot of people are apprehensive of cameras. In Cuba, people love the camera, so it's a great place to learn that way. Anyways guys, that's it for this street photography episode. Tomorrow's gonna be a regular vlog style episode and I'll see you guys on that show. Peace.